Good morning, good morning to you. Our day is beginning, there's so much to do. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Our day is beginning, there's so much to do. Hey my friends, welcome back, I've missed you. Today we're gonna have a science lesson. So I picked a sea creature to dive deep into and so we can learn a little bit more about it. Oh my goodness, you wanna see? I even brought it with me today. Do you know what this is called? What's this? Let me turn around so you can see. What sea creature is this? Do you know what that is? Here's a hint. It's a compound word. Ooh, we've done compound words, haven't we? We sure have. What is this? Now, of course, this, this sea creature is no longer alive. It's firm. It's not squishy like it used to be when it was alive. What's this called? Do you know what's called? Did you say starfish? You got it! Oh, let's do it. Ready? Star, fish, <gasps> starfish. When two words come together, it makes a brand new word. Star, fish, starfish. We're gonna learn about a starfish today. It's really silly looking, isn't it? It's got these tubes in here to help it move around and to help it catch its food. This is where its mouth is, right in the middle. And it used to eat little fish, little, little sea animals. It used to eat it right in the middle. Now, on each of these arms had a little eyeball so they can see. If at any point some kind of creature decided to try to eat the starfish and it lost an arm, it would regrow. I know, <laughs> that's crazy. It would regrow its arm. Sometimes if it lost most of its body, but it kept a little bit of the middle and one arm, it would regrow the whole thing. Wow. Did you know that? Some starfish live 35 years. Whoa! They can be really teeny tiny and they can be three feet long. They can be huge. They come in different species. This is just a simple starfish. I don't know what kind it is, but there's lots of different kinds. They're sea urchins, but they're in the family of sea urchins. They're kind of kind of like a sand dollar. I've got one of those too. You want to see? Kind of like this. You see? The sand dollar. They all have five points on it. You can find side dollar, sand dollars in the ocean, like right on the edge at the beach. When it has just a little bit of water, you'll see it have five air holes popping up near the wet sand. And if you dig, you'll find them. You can find this in the sand. Now, when sand dollars are alive, it's covered in hairs to move, but they stay pretty flat and squishy. This, this is a husk. This is a, a dead sand dollar. And they're, they're both in the sea urchin family. They're kind of like they're related, like they're cousins. Do you want to learn a little bit more about them with me? Okay, let's read our book. Let's go over the parts of the book. What's this part of the book? Let's go over our print concepts. What part of the book is this? Let me hear you. You're right. This is the front of the book. You're getting so good at this. What part of the book is this? You're right. Great job, my friends. You're getting quick. This is the back of the book. Do you remember what this is called? What's this called? You got it, the side or the spine. What's this called at the top? What's that called at the top? <gasps> Did you say the big letters at the top are called, or on the front cover, right? The big letters on the front are called the title. You got it. Spiny sea star, a tale of seeing stars. Can we count the words in that title? Get your fingers ready. 
spiny sea star, a tale of sea stars. How many words are in that title? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many? Eight. Because the last number that we count tells us how many. Now let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did we get it right? We did. Because the last number that we count tells us how many. And with math, we always double check our work when we're counting because sometimes we count wrong and we miss a number. So it's always good to count it twice, maybe even three times to make sure we get it correct. Math can be tricky if you don't count it correctly, and then you won't get the right answer, will you? You can't get the right answer if you count it wrong. Suzanne Tate is the author. What does the author do? Let me hear you. The author writes the words. You got it. The author writes the words. The author writes the words. How did Ariel? The author writes the words. Illustrated by James Melvin. What does the illustrator do? Let me hear you. Did you start singing it already? You remembered. The illustrator draws the pictures. The illustrator draws the pictures. Hi, ho, the Dario. The illustrator draws the pictures. You got it. Spiny sea star. A tale of seeing stars. Spiny sea star was a spiny skinned animal. He was made of prickly little plates that helped him move. His five arms formed the shape of a star. Spiny was often called a starfish. That's a compound word. But he wasn't a fish at all. I'm a sea star. Scientists, they're like, we don't want to call them starfish anymore. We want to call them sea stars. Because it's not actually a fish, it's a sea urchin. Oh man, these scientists, they're going to try and change the name, aren't they? Well, we can call it either starfish or we can call them sea stars. Both are correct now. Spidey had tiny eyes, one at the end of each arm, but he didn't have good eyesight. He only saw dark and bright lights. He only saw a gray scale, dark black, gray, and white. That's all he saw didn't see colors, did he? Thousands of two feet lined his spiny arms. They were little gills in there. That's how they breathe. Spiny could breathe through its feet. See, through its feet. That's how it breathed through those tubes. The star-shaped creature lived with his family at the bottom of the sea. The sea stars could walk along one arm at a time. So now that this starfish is hard, it can't really move, but it was really squishy and flexible, and it moved one arm at a time and crawled on the bottom of the ocean. Tiny suction cups on their two feet helped them move. Spiny's brothers and sisters moved slowly so they could sneak up on a clam. <gasps> it's their favorite food. Do you like clams? Have you had clams before? It's a type of seafood. Some people like clams. Maybe you've had clams before. I bet maybe your mom or your daddy likes clams. But Spiny pulled himself along the bottom as fast as he could. Spiny the sea star just wanted to be different. What fun, he thought, as he made the sand swirl near a clam bed. But the clam clammed up and he couldn't get the clam open where the meat was. He couldn't eat the clam because the clam shut real tight. Couldn't get any food. Uh-oh. Maybe he needs to go a bit slower. Let's find out. Spiny, spiny, can't catch a clammy, his brothers and sister chanted. Oh no, they're teasing him. They knew that a sea star needs to sneak up and put its arm around a clam. A sea star must hold on tight, they told Spiny, until the clam opens up to breathe. So he has to be very patient. He has to slowly get on top of the clam and hold tight and wait for the clam to open up to breathe. You have to be very patient. You have to go very slow and very quiet to get a clam. Let's see if Spiny can do it. Then you can slurp a juicy treat, says brothers and sisters. 
But Spining didn't take time to learn from others. He, he wondered out loud, why can't I catch a clam? A big sea star slowly pulled herself arm after arm over to his side. It was Grandma Gracie, the grandest sea star of all. Oh, I bet she's very wise. Do you listen to your grandma and grandpa? They have a lot of wisdom, don't they? I hope, I hope Spidey can listen to his grandma. Maybe she's got good advice for him. It's very important to listen. Watch your brothers and sisters, she said. See how they take time to catch a clam. But Spiny didn't want to listen. He still rushed around, quickly grabbing clam after clam and not waiting and being patient for them to breathe so he can eat them. Because they need to eat too. They're hungry, right? A fish needs to survive just like we do. A starfish too. The clams need to eat too. They're all, they're all living creatures that need to eat. Like we do. So he needs to be patient or he's gonna he's gonna be starving. You're not gonna have he's gonna be so hungry. He's not gonna know what to do with himself. Hmm. But the clams kept clamming up again. One day Spiny hurried so fast that two of his arms tried to go to the left and the other three to the right. Oh no, what do you think is gonna happen? Two of his arms are trying to go this way, three of his arms are trying to go that way. What's gonna happen to Spiny? Oh no! Grandma Gracie saw him just in time. You could break into pieces doing that, she warned him. Spiny sank down and pretended not to listen. Oh, she scolded him a little, didn't she? <gasps> Let me tell you about your cousin, the silly sea star, Grandma Gracie said. When he was just a little star, he moved so fast that he broke into five pieces. All the arms popped off. He grew into five new stars and never was the same again. I told you they regrew back. You went crazy. What a great technique when you're being eaten by something else. You can break off and regrow your body. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a good technique, right? So that predators don't eat you. You can just break off a piece of you and walk away and regrow it later. We can't do that. Humans can't regrow our body parts like that. But Spiny didn't listen. That's just a tall tale, he said. That's not true. Do you think it's true? One night, Spiny dreamed about the silly sea star. He saw Spiny arms flying off and growing into five new stars. Oh, he was nervous. He was worried. He's kind of having a nightmare. Spiny woke up with a start. Oh, Grandma Gracie pulled over to him. What is wrong? She said. I was seeing stars, he exclaimed. Oh, no. I was worried. Grandma Gracie listened quietly as he told her about his scary dream. There's just one thing to do, she said. You must slow down. Be patient. Take your time. At last, her words began to make sense. Maybe I will listen to her, Spiny thought. He began to creep arm after arm looking for clams. Oh, he's going slow. Spidey sneaked up on a clam and put his five arms around it, and he sat, and he waited patiently. Oh, let's see if this, this gives him a reward for being patient. When the clam opened its mouth, <gasps> Spidey slurped the tasty treat. He ate the inside of that clam where the meat was. Grandma Gracie was right, he said to himself. If you take the time, you can. Find more treats in life. And, at, and ever after, Spiny was a happy sea star. Great job, my friends, for listening to our story. This is published by Nags Head Art. There are so many different books to read about different sea creatures. Just in case you want to read some more, there's some more for you to get. Well, that's a silly story. What did we learn about that? Spiny the sea star had to do lots of things, didn't he? What did he have to learn? Do you remember? Could he go fast? No, he wasn't getting any food when he went fast. What did he have to do? Do you remember? Well, 
He started going really fast, didn't he? That's the first thing. And then the second thing was the clams weren't opening up for him to eat. That's the defense of a clam, right? To clam up, to, to, to keep safe. Well, because Spidey wasn't waiting, the clam wasn't opening up to breathe. If he waited patiently on a clam, it would open up for him. But he didn't want to be patient. And he didn't want to listen to Grandma Gracie, remember? So what did he do? <gasps> he had a nightmare. You're right, he had a nightmare. And it scared him that he might lose his arms and regrow like the silly sea star did, like Grandma Gracie told him. And then he decided to take his time and be patient and wait for those clams to slowly open up. And when he waited, what happened? Do you remember? The clam opened up to breathe and the starfish could eat the clam. So then it was, it was full, it was finally eating. I bet it was so hungry. Do you think Spiny was really hungry? Sure was. We learned a lot of things about starfish, didn't we? We learned the, how they crawl. We learned how they're patient and they wait, they eat, they eat the insides of clams. And we learned that they have five arms. Sometimes they can have up to, I can't remember how many arms, how many arms they normally have. They can have a lot of different arms. They can have up to 40 arms. Now this one's just a normal starfish. It only has five. But some different species can have up to 40 arms. That would look kind of weird. Remember I told you they come in all different shapes and sizes and they can live up to 35 years. That's longer than a doggy can live. It's longer than a kitty cat can live. Normally cats and dogs only live about 20 years. Sometimes a little, little less. Humans live to be about 80 years old or, or sometimes more. So we live longer than starfish and we live longer than, than other pets like dogs and cats. Well, that's interesting to think about. This starfish, like I was telling you, has these tubes inside there. Now, a starfish does not have blood like we do. We have a blood system in our body. This has a water vascular system and it pumps water through those tubes and throughout its body. So it doesn't need blood, it has water in its body. Now we have a lot of water in our body, but we also need blood too. But this, this starfish does not need blood. I think that's an interesting fact to know. Now let's move on to our sand dollar and learn a little bit more about that. You ready? Sand dollars are on the bottom of the ocean floor near the sand. And it eats little sand particles. Its favorite kind of sand to eat is magnetite. Magnetite is like an iron ore. It's very heavy. And little pebbles of it are at the bottom in the sand. Little pieces of it. Different kinds of rocks are, are in the sand, but they're broken down to teeny tiny grains. Well, it loves to eat sand. And so if its favorite is that magnetite. And what it does with that iron ore is it eats it and it weighs down the sand dollar so it's heavy enough to stay at the bottom of the ocean so it doesn't, doesn't move so much. It really likes that heavy metal like pebble and grain as, as a tasty treat. This one doesn't eat many, many live things. Sometimes they'll eat plankton. Those are really small. Do, do you watch SpongeBob? Plankton's on Spongebob. That's the kind of animal it eats sometimes, but it usually can't catch them because it doesn't move very fast. But it really likes to eat sand, little grains of sand. It eats right there in that hole. You see it? This is pretty firm because it's just the husk. When they're, when they're alive on the bottom of the ocean, they're purple. Some of them are purple and they're very hairy. They got lots of hair on top and, and on the bottom. And that's how it moves. The little hair molecules, little molecules of hair, little particles just help it move. There's lots of little, little hairs and little tubes, kind of like the starfish. One of the other things they like to eat in the sand is that little sand particles have algae on it. 
like how like that green stuff that grows inside inside water and oceans and lakes and rivers. Well, that green algae, that type of plant that grows in lots of water like that, it's very tasty to a sand dollar, like a little treat. What are some of the things you like to eat? Do you like to eat seaweed? Have you tried seaweed before? It's kind of tasty. I've had it with sushi before. Some people eat seaweed for snacks. Seaweed's kind of like algae, but just a little different. And here's our last little fact. These five holes at the top are called pelloids, and they help it breathe. Remember how I told you when it was sitting under the sand where there's just, just a little bit of water, a little wet sand near the beach, right where the waves start coming in? You'll start seeing five little air bubbles pop up from the sand. If you see five little air bubbles, I bet you there's a sand dollar under there. A lot of people like to dig for sand dollars at Ocean City. Have you been to Ocean City or another ocean before? Maybe you could find one. That might be fun to do. Thank you, my friends, for coming to my science lesson and learning about starfish and sand dollars. These are different type of sea creatures, a type of sea urchin. Remember, it's in the sea urchin family. It's a lot of facts in there for you to learn. You can always watch this video as many times as you want to remember some of those facts. Why well, I love you so much. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful day and keep learning about sea creatures. I love animals and I love learning and I hope you do too. Bye my friends, I love you. Hey my friends, thanks for being a part of my lesson today. If you like this lesson, hit the thumbs up button at the bottom. That's the like button, okay? It's sure to make me smile. Hey parents, you wanna get your child ready for school? You don't want them to fall behind in school? Hit the subscribe button at the bottom. And in the description, you can also find my Facebook page. If you have any questions or comments or concerns about these videos, I'm more than happy to answer any of them. So hit the Facebook page and connect with me. I'd love to hear what you have to say about these videos, and I'm always gonna try to make them better and better. Also, you can hit the bell at the bottom so you don't miss any of the new videos. If you wanna help donate to my cause, if you wanna continue to see more free videos on YouTube for tons of families who need this, make sure you click the Patreon page and check out how you can donate and how you can help. Anything makes a difference. Huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for donating to this cause. It's allowing us to create even higher quality videos, more free videos for families like you who need this resource at home. We are utilizing kindergarten skill maps along with Common Core standards to make these lessons. And you are helping make a difference in children's lives all around the US. Thank you for everything that you've been doing.